वेलकम टू रमज़ान बयालोजी लेक्चर्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब एंड आल्सो प्रेस द बिल आइकन टू रिसीव अपडेट्स ऑफ माय लेक्चर्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब अस्सलाम वालेकुम वेलकम बैक टू बायोलॉजी लेक्चर्स इन दिस लेक्चर यू टॉक अबाउट द हार्ट एनाटॉमी एंड फिजियोलॉजी एंड यू टॉक अबाउट सम ब्लड फ्लो इन हार्ट व्हाट ऑकर इन हार्ट एंड व्हाट इज द कंटेंट ऑफ हार्ट इनसाइड so you can see all this is a topic of structure of heart the top of what contains heart as consist of so you can see here that heart is consist of four chambers you all can see this one chamber second third and fourth so as you can measure from the real diagram that heart is consist of two auricle these are called auricle or you can see at your and this is called ventricle so heart is consist of two atrio one two and two ventricle as you can see this is my right side this is my left side so on the board i will draw that this is the right side while this is the left side so you can see the there are one atria and one ventricle and the right side of the heart and one atria and one ventricle and the left side of the heart now what's the difference between atria and the ventricle the main difference is that that atria you can see here atria is smaller than the ventricle and the second that the atria the wall of the atria are thinner as compared to ventricle why because The common origin is this: that atria, both atria and auricle, are not involved in the great pressure or the pumping out of the blood from the uh, heart or uh, inside the heart, while the two ventricles are involved in the great pressure, the pumping the blood outside or from the heart. You can see here that the ventricle. the right ventricle push the blood into lungs while the left ventricle push the blood across the whole body so therefore ventricle have thicker uh, walls and they are larger in size as compared to atria so our heart is consists of four chamber two atria and two ventricles now we will talk about what are the uh, vessels are what uh, so firstly we will say that how the blood reaches the heart so we say that veins are the all the vessels which carry the oxygenated blood uh, from all over the body and collect them and send them to the heart so these all veins as i confer there these are the veins so the collecting of the veins come from all over the body and come from upper side and also from the lower side and direct the blood and to the vena cava so we say vena cava is the largest vein in the body which collect the oxygenated blood from all over the veins uh, of the body and enter the this blood into the heart so we say this is called vena cava this is called vena cava or the right with another pen this is called vena cava and this is called superior vena cava superior while this is called inferior vena cava in period this is called period it means that superior vena cava collect the oxygenated blood from upper side of the body and the inferior collect the blood from lower side of the body so which one is the largest vena cava in the body so inferior vena cava is larger in size than the superior why because my heart is there so my heart is near to the upper side of the body so what will occur the the blood compared to the uh, the blood and upper side of my body as lower in size than the lower side my inferior vena cava collect more blood like it goes down to my legs also so they collect more blood and send them to the uh, heart so therefore inferior vena cava is the largest vena cava is compared to superior vena cava now the talk is this that when blood comes here so they direct this blood 
from upper side also and lower side also and the blood come there into atria so we say what's the function of the right atria what's the function of right atria the function of right atria is to collect the blood the deoxygenated blood from all over the body this is deoxygenated blood then it comes in the right atria this is the first relaxation of the heart when heart relaxes so the blood comes to the right atria now the blood has to go down into the ventricle so there is a special valve which is called tricuspid valve this will call tricuspid valve why it is called tricuspid because it has three cusps it means if i take these are the two cusps and one from the lower side okay two from here and one from here so it make three cusps so therefore we call it as tricuspid valve so it consists of tricuspid valve this is called tricuspid valve tricuspid now atria has the blood deoxygenated blood and through this vein the blood will move into the next part the right ventricle now from the right ventricle i'll mention here as a blood come there so now the right ventricle push the blood with great pressure into the lungs through the pulmonary artery this is called this portion is called the pulmonary artery is called pulmonary artery as you say the arteries are those vessels which carry blood away from the heart so you can mention that this is the artery which carry the blood away from the lung but imagine this is the very basic talk there that the all artery contain the oxygenated blood like you say that the artery carry the oxygenated blood from our heart but this is the only artery which carry the deoxygenated blood from our heart into the lungs and the pulmonary mean some action which is going with the lungs so it is the action which is going with the lung and you say it is the lung artery the lung artery which carry the blood from our heart to the lungs for oxygenation so now the blood comes from the uh, uh, right atria through the uh, tricuspid valve tricuspid swell and then the uh, right ventricle push the blood with great pressure and to the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary artery divide into two each goes to two lungs this go to right and this go to left lungs okay now there is some uh, special thing that uh, these are the some tendon cords we talk about this later but uh, we are talking about the uh, now the process the completion of this process we are talking about this later now the blood sent the heart send the blood to the uh, lungs now the blood will come back so this is called the left atria this is called left atria this is called atria but the left atria and this is called ventricle ventricle okay now the blood after oxygenation will come through the pulmonary veins these are called the uh, pulmonary veins so we say when are those vessels which carry the blood from whole body to the heart but the basic talk is this that all vein contain the deoxygenated blood except from the pulmonary vein and the heart which contain the oxygenated blood it is the character of pulmonary vein actually they are four in number two are the on the portal side while two are on the dorsal side if you imagine so two are on the dorsal side 
and to to carry the oxygenated blood from each lung to to carry so now the blood will come and to the right atria this blood is oxygenated therefore i call it as a red blood and this was the blue blood so when there is no oxygen in the blood the blood looks green bluish in color while when there is oxygen so the blood looks red in color now there is another well which will send this oxygenated blood from the atria to the ventricle this well is called the bicuspid well bicuspid well this is the well which have two cusps like this so one cusps and this is second cusps it means there are the two cusps which are present and the bicuspid valve. Now the atria will send this blood and the oxygenated blood into the ventricle through bicuspid valve. The blood will come there. Okay. Now the right ventricle will push this blood with great pressure into the aorta. It is called aorta. Now there are some special wells present in the uh, also in the filamentary artery and also the in the aorta. These two ven uh, wells are called semilunar uh, veins. It's called semilunar arterial wells. Called semilunar arterial wells. Semilunar. semilunar arterial wells and this is called also semilunar aorta uh, wells they are called semilunar because they are half of the moon like we say moon is when moon is half so it look like this structure as i have mentioned here so this is called semilunar valve also called martyr semilunar wells okay now the blood will the right ventricle will push the blood uh, into the uh, aorta and the aorta through the uh, semilunar well, semilunar well, well, the blood will distribute it through the all over the body. So now the aorta also divide into three valves, three vessels, this is called left subclavian well, vessels subclavian artery, left subclavian artery, this is called left common carotid artery and this is called trunk artery. These two are on the left side while this is on the right side, this is called trunk artery, this is called left subclavian artery, this is called left common carotid artery. Now the blood will distribute it and these two, three uh, uh, division of the aorta like this and this and the trunk means it goes to the lower side part of the body. Now there are some special type of muscles which are present inside the heart inside the uh, ventricle which help in the motion of the blood and uh, uniflow of the blood these are called you can see here these uh, filament you can see here these filament these are called tendon cords tendon cords they're called tendon cords tendon cords and they are embedded in the uh, heart muscles with the help of papillary muscles. Papillary muscles. Okay. So, these are the cords which are called also present in the uh, left and the right ventricle. These are called tendon cords and they are embedded in the muscle of the heart with the help of papillary muscles and the function of these tendon cord is to is to prevent the back flow of the uh, blood like a uh, blood is coming so it hold the uh, semil uh, bicuspid well in order to don't flave oversight don't and 
permit the blood to enter the ventricle. So the function of it to hold the well or often in order to prevent the back flow of the blood into the atria also in the dexygenated and the right side and also in the left side and so these are the muscles now this was uh, the inside content of the uh, heart the whole heart perform its function now we talk about the protection of heart the foot of prison and the heart so the outermost cover wrap around the heart this is called pericardium as you can see here this green portion and this red portion these two are called pericardium i will mention here as a these are called pericardium pericardium the, the uh, red also and the uh, blue green also so Pericardium is a double membrane which wrap around the heart and this also. And between these two double membrane, there is a cavity where the pericardial fluid is present. So this is the cavity of the pericardium. And you can see here this black, black portion hole is called pericardial fluid. This is called pericardial fluid okay now there is another uh, wall around the heart is called cardiac wall you can see here this blue portion blue portion all over the heart you can see here that this wall is more a uh, larger in size and the uh, right say left side are the left ventricle as compared to the right ventricle why the reason of this is this that uh, this cardiac wall prevent the great pressure of blood which uh, help the uh, ventricles to push the blood outside from the heart so as we say that a right ventricle only push the blood from the heart dexinate that from the heart to the lungs through the pulmonary artery so if this is my heart and these are my, are my lungs so my heart is not more further than the my uh, lungs so it is near so it will directly push the blood into the lungs and there is no need of more pressure to be exerted on the blood and this pressure is enough for the blood while if we talk about the left ventricle so the left ventricle is the uh, as the portion chamber of the heart which push the blood to the aorta and aorta is the vessel which carry the blood through to every cell microscopic cell of the body every part head uh, our eyes our legs our hands so due to this reason the left ventricle need great pressure to be exerted on the blood and to push this with great pressure into the aorta because you say and the aorta the blood pressure is very faster in the aorta and then it uh, uh, slow down so the uh, this to be exert more pressure and to uh, uh, send the blood to every cell of the body the left ventricle exert more pressure on the blood and therefore the part this great uh, pressure exerting the left ventricle uh, need more expanding so for more expanding there is need for more protection so for more protection there will be the cardiac wall will be larger in size to prevent the great expanding of the left ventricle as compared to the right ventricle because the right ventricle exert a little pressure as compared to the left ventricle so this is the reason of this uh, cardiac wall inside the cardiac wall and the wall of the heart there are uh, you can see here these red fluid which we call as a, a cardiac muscle these are the ca ca cardiac muscle due to the presence of this cardiac muscle heart is the part of the body which work on thirstily on thirstily because in every minute a healthy person a stable person he uh, a stable person his uh, lung push the blood and relax and contract and one minute 
72 and this uh, increase as we take exercise into 120 so due to this relaxation and contraction our heart need more thrusting but because due to the fluorescence of these muscles this provide heart to work on thirstily and our heart is not, not don't become thirst we haven't said that my heart is thirst so my heart can't send the blood push the blood across the uh, body and relax and contract slowly we can say this because there is a the presence of cardiac muscle which help in the relaxation and contraction of the heart okay next if you talk about inside the wall of the heart so there are also some muscles we call these these you can see here these green portion also in this these are called the endocardium is called endocardium okay this was pericardium pericard peri mean perimeter so perimeter we recognize in mathematical language the outside region from a circle so there par pericardium is outer side from the heart while end end mean inside so and cardium mean heart so this is present inside the heart and this is present outside the heart and these two pro, uh, prevent the relaxation and contraction of the heart and help the uh, heart to work on thirstily and the relaxation and contraction the beating of relaxation and contraction and sending the blood to every cell of the body and as you can see here this uh, red portion this contain cardiac muscle this is the portion we call as a we call a, this is a septum septum muscles this is the portion where the right side of the heart differentiate or separate from the left side of the heart and their part due to the presence of this the deoxygenated blood cannot mix with the oxygenated blood present in the la, uh, left side of the heart and this elongate is more farther so heart have two chamber have two parts right part and left part okay lip right part also contain two uh, one atria and one ventricle and the left side also contain one atria and one ventricle and uh, they contain the deoxygenated blood while this contain the oxygenated blood it push the blood into the lungs it collect the blood from the whole body and push this to the lung while it collect the blood from the lung and push this ho to whole body so uh, uh, right and left side are completely opposite of each other in every aspect okay now this was about the anatomy of the heart that uh, we know that how heart is made of and from what muscle the heart is made of so this was uh, the shorter anatomy of the heart so i hope this section may be helpful to you and if you have any doubt any question in this so you can mention in the comment and please subscribe and share my lecture for next video see you next time welcome to ramzan biology lectures please subscribe and also press the bell icon to receive updates of my lectures Please subscribe for the next video. Like. Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Ramzan Bayal.